Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today on the episode of Everything You Like Is Fucking Depressing, we're going to be looking at Pucks. Pucks are a part of the Brachiosaurus breed of dog, more commonly referred to as flat-faced dogs. Not hard to see where they got the name from, literally looks like someone just smashed them around the face with a frying pan, but I digress. Right, so I don't really have anything planned with for the intro, so let's get right into it. Now, if we go back a couple centuries, pugs look like a basically just a smaller wolf. There's not too much difference in terms of body structure. They still have the normal shaped head. Legs are proportionate to the size of the body. You know, they're not too bad and not a million miles away from the wolves. However, if we say look at a pug's skull nowadays, yeah, you could kind of see why they're so fucked up. I asked my mate to guess what this skull was from and this was his response. The science behind how they came from just these normal dogs to these fucking monstrosities is quite interesting. Pugs find their origin in China, with some sources dating them all the way back to 700 BC. It wasn't actually until the 1500s that they were brought over to Europe. Once in Europe, they found workers guard and hunting dogs, as well as companions for the higher class. Like I said before, back then, they had a very normal characteristics of a dog, and their appearance was generally accepted by many as a very adorable companion for their home. They weren't really fucked up as much as they were now, they were normal. However, we're not talking about the pre-pug, we're talking about the current pug. It wasn't until the early 1800s that the popularity of the classic pug began to fall. But in 1860, new pugs with shorter legs and faces arrived from China and instantly became a favourite of Queen Victoria. With such a powerful status symbol at the time taking a liking to these pugs, they instantly grew in popularity almost overnight. Unfortunately, this is also where they started to go downhill. While we can't blame England for creating the modern pug as this was clearly from China, where this flat-faced and short-legged animal came from, we can blame them for making it a lot worse. Through the 19th and 20th century, when purebreds became all the rage in Europe, breeding and, and inbreeding in particular began to take place, especially with pugs. Through the years, these animals became more and more deformed, until everything that resembled the OG pug was smashed to pieces like a frying pan had hit it in the face. From there, they've only grown in popularity, and in the last few years in particular, a certain pug we'll talk about later only added to that flame. Despite its physical appearance going under such a dramatic change, its personality remained somewhat the same. They were still an amazing family dog with a great temperament. However, its health was essentially destroyed, and in short, these animals shouldn't be alive. I've already shown you the fucked up skull of these animals, but now I just want to go a bit more into their anatomy. I'm no biologist, so all my knowledge of these animals is from Google or things I've learned through my own experiences or from my boss at the pet shop I work at. First off, let's look at the thing you might actually know them for, which is their elongated soft palate. Now, the soft palate is a group of tissue that's in the back of the roof of the mouth. For normal mammals that haven't been fucked by genetic manipulation, this will be in proportionate to the size of their head, body, and that kind of thing. For pugs, on the other hand, because they were bred with so little regard for their well-being, the soft palate didn't really get the memo it was supposed to shrink along with the rest of the snout. The result of this is that they started suffering from Brachiosaurus airway syndrome. Basically, because they have an elongated soft palate, the excess length causes the airway to become partially blocked, making it more difficult to breathe. Not only that, but it also limits their ability to regulate their body temperature through panting. Also, I'm pretty sure you've heard this sound before. Well, that's the pug struggling to breathe. Worst thing of all, all pugs have this problem, from birth till death. While those breathing difficulties may be what the pugs are most famous for, believe me, they have a fucking lot more problems than just that. On average, they live four years less than a normal dog, they are more prone to life-threatening and life-changing diseases and conditions. About 50% have serious breathing difficulties, 35% have your run-of-the-mill breathing difficulties, and 15% can breathe like a fucking normal animal. Pug dog and syphilis. Well, this one's named after the pug, so that's just a fun start. This neurological condition normally affects younger pugs, just under or just over a year old. 
It is an inflammation of the central nervous system and will inevitably lead to the death of any pug unlucky enough to have it. Also, there is currently no cure for it. Typically, PDE can start with seizures that can last from a few seconds to a few minutes before the dog inevitably returns to normal. However, more and more seizures will occur in the following days or weeks, along with other abnormalities. The dog may start showing signs of depression, disorientation, bewilderment, and general behaviourment changes. They will also start becoming a lot more lethargic and less likely to engage in physical activities. Noticeable symptoms usually happen at best a few months before the pug's death. While it's not known exactly what causes PDE, given that it's hereditary and the fact that pugs are the only ones that have it and they are one of the most deformed breeds around, I would say it was more than likely caused by their crappy breeding over the last century. I'm going to run through some more diseases and conditions real quick. Keep in mind though, all the diseases I've chosen are often often found in pugs and are often caused by either damaged genetics or abnormalities, i.e. their incredibly large eyes. Entropion, a condition where the eyelid rolls inwards, causing a massive amount of pain and at worst, complete sight loss. And if that eye-related illness doesn't take your fancy, you always have proctosis and that is just mm, lovely. I mean, you just love how the pug's eyes look like they're bulging out their skull, now you can enjoy it in its final form. Canine hip dysplasia, though they may not show signs at first, but within a few months or even a few years, they will begin having difficulties walking, playing and exercising. They may eventually completely lose the ability to walk, which will lead to them having to be euthanized. There are treatments, however, they can be incredibly expensive if the condition progresses rapidly enough. Skin fold dermatitis. Because of the excess skin on these dogs, they can be prone to having irritated skin within these folds if they are not washed oftenly enough. Oh, this one, uh, hemivertebrae? I think that's how you pronounce that one. So pugs and other dogs with corkscrew tails are prone to this con condition, which leads them to, at best, develop walking difficulties and at worst, complete paralysis. They're, they're paralysis, which again will lead to them having to be euthanized or an incredibly expensive surgery. And finally, I want to talk about obesity. So this one is more linked to the people that actually take care of pugs. However, because they ha do have a more lazy attitude towards life, they are a lot more prone than many other dogs. And if they are not walked often enough or exercised often enough, they can become obese a lot quicker than any other dog. Safe to say, pugs have a lot of fucking health problems. A crap ton more than any normal dog. So I guess the question to ask is why? And to do that, we're going to look towards the kennel clubs. Now, while kennel clubs do do a lot of stuff, in regards to this video, all we're going to be looking at is their breeding practices. And essentially, their breeding practices are bloody awful. It's basically just a lot of inbreeding and overbreeding, and all they ever want is to create a marketable breed, which the pug is. What is even more messed up is the fact that crossbreeding could fix most of these problems. I can remember a story quite a while ago, if I can find the source it will be in the description down below, which was essentially Labradors had a very, a very deadly disease in their bladder I believe it was, and through crossbreeding some guy in Canada was actually able to cure this. However, kennel clubs didn't want to accept this new crossbred Dalmatian because it wasn't purebred anymore, and this can be seen with English Bulldogs as well. There's an English Bulldog in my town that actually has a normal fucking snout, unlike the normal English Bulldogs, which, again, like pugs, have gone under the frying pan treatment. The fact that there's proof that crossbreeding could fix the problem the pug has is, is fucking amazing that kennel clubs just won't do it, that they just want the purebred to have in the fucking dog shows over then the actual health of the dog, and it's incredibly pathetic. Now, two things here. Not all kennel clubs are the same. I don't I don't want to put them all in the same boat here, but from what I've seen, a lot of them still hold on to these practices. And secondly, I have seen in the news quite a while ago, it was quite a few years ago now, that they had taken up responsibility for these fucking atrocities they've caused. However, from what I can see, it's still happening, and it's happening quite a lot. Saying, oh, we fucked up, then continuing to fuck up, it's fucking retarded. This is essentially the same as a YouTuber doing an apology video and then going back to what they always do. It doesn't show you've learned, it doesn't show that you have taken responsibility. 
It shows you know how to say the word responsibility. It does not show you know its meaning. Like I said before, not all kennel clubs are the same. There are going to be a lot of good ones out there that are working to improve this breed's health. However, from what I've seen, a lot of them aren't. And the fact that the pug is still idolised as this incredibly adorable dog, which is probably one of the most popular dogs right now, I believe it's top 10 in the UK, or at least it was last I checked, it, it still shows that they want a marketable breed. They are still overbreeding them so they can ship them out to potential buyers. They are not fixing the problem. Speaking of the popularity of this dog, Dog the mother friggin' pug. So, I have no hate towards this animal. I think hating on an animal that has no say in the health conditions it has or the breeding practices that it undergoes is fucking idiotic. I also don't really hate his owners. I think overall they've been very positive with Dog, visiting hospitals with him and just cheering people up when they have a crap day. It can't be excused though that the hidden message this animal sends is quite disturbing. What you are doing is you're taking an animal with severe deformities and serious health problems linked to these deformities, putting him on a pedestal and making people idolise him. And I would be fine with this if at least they talked about how damaged his breed is, or just spoke about the serious health problems that Doug probably does have or will have in the future. You know, just wanting to educate people on this breed. God forbid he actually use his influence to spread awareness of how awful this breed actually is. In a hypothetical situation, where Doug actually showed traits that you would normally expect when you hear of a deformed animal, and then he was put on a pedestal, and just made as this like celebrity animal, I don't think people would be as accepting, I think they would have a riot about it. The only reason that they don't is because, as well as looking cute, all his deformities are mainly on the inside where you can't see them, the only one that's really shown is the snorting noise they make, which again is linked to their breathing problems, but most people will just see that as cute. Because when it comes to animals, most people will just look skin deep. They won't really think about what is underneath, what's happening within the mind, the biology of said animal. If a cute animal shows no outward signs of pain or distress, we as humans are going to be less likely to ask, what has this uh, animal sacrificed in terms of its cuteness? And for that, we'll go back further in this video and you'll see. The pug should not exist. I personally would not like to see them being bred anymore. I would like it only if people would go to adoption centres or if they were crossbred to help fix some of their problems. These animals suffer every single day just so we can look at them and take pictures and just smile with them, not really realising they are in a fucking seriously bad state right now. And the fact that Doug the Pug is basically the poster boy of the entire pet keeping hobby right now is fucking absurd to me because that is an incredibly deformed, suffering animal, and it should not be given the positive attention it's getting. I would wager his influence has significantly increased the amount of pugs sold in the world. I would definitely like to see the owners of Doug actually talk about this issue, because like I say, I don't have any hate towards them, I think they're both lovely people, but I do think they should talk about this. I do realise I've repeated myself quite a lot in this video, and I do apologise for that, but I do really just want to get my points across. This animal is deformed, it has serious health problems, please don't fucking buy into that. Look further than what you see. I do really hope this video picks up, at least in the pet keeping hobby, just so more people start talking about this. I know I'm, I'm not the first, I'm not saying I'm the one that's discovered these problems. They've been talked about a lot in videos in the past, there's been a lot of news articles about them, but I feel that the more that we can talk about it, the better chance we have of fixing it. Down in the comments below, I want you guys to start talking about this. I want to know what you think of the pug, what you think of breeding practices in general, and what you think of Dog in particular, and how he is idolised despite being a very deformed animal. And just remember, do respect other people's opinions in the comments below as well. But anyway, I think that's it for this video. Uh, please like and subscribe, and yeah, that's it. I'll see you all next time. Have a fantastic day.